My name is Shavart, and as you can see, so that there is a face to the voice, this would be me on the right. I'm, I'm one of the two student success specialists at Center for Continuing and Online Learning. On the left, you will see Tony Mendez, my colleague, who is the other student success specialist at Center for Continuing and Online Learning, and I'll be the host for this online orientation session. So before we begin, there are two goals for this orientation. The goal of this orientation is to offer tips and information to help you get started in your online courses. Whether you are a new or returning student, the topics we discuss today will help you get off on the right foot. This is here online learning is learning via the internet. I like to think of online learning as a self-directed learning, so the accountability is on you. Most people can learn informally by searching the internet for specific information with a simple Google how-to. Taking an online course for college credit is different as you need to meet specific learning requirements, but it is convenient because it allows you to pursue your education without having to attend a class at a particular time and place. There are several factors that can affect your ability to be successful at online learning. Some of these we will discuss today. Now we're going to go over some myths and expectations for online learning and see if you've heard any of these and whether you think they are true or false. True or false? Online courses are easier than traditional face-to-face -face classes. False. Online courses cover the same material and learning objectives as their corresponding face-to-face -face classes. However, online courses generally require more reading, writing, and time online, since no live class time is required. If you have more limited computer skills, you may find the class more challenging, as you will need to learn computer skills as well as the course content. The convenience of not having to go on campus saves time, but the course is not going to be easier than its face-to-face -face counterpart. True or false, online courses do not require any textbooks. False, most online courses require textbooks. Additional reading or listening to course content may be required online. Required to engage with other students on discussion boards. Most courses require you to engage with them and participate in group work or take web-based quizzes. Reading of electronic or print textbooks is only one single aspect of most online courses. True or false? Online courses are not as high quality as their face-to-face -face counterpart. False. Online courses may have different types of activities and assignments that are more suited for online delivery. CCOL maintains a rigorous design and development process to ensure that courses are designed in a way that will help you learn. All students are asked to complete a course feedback survey toward the end of their course. We take all feedback into consideration and value the students' comments. You will be reminded towards the end of the term about when to complete the course feedback survey. Now we will talk about your Brightspace LMS or Learning Management System. Never used Algonquin this LMS before? Within Brightspace, there is a student essentials course that has training materials, including a series of videos addressing everything you need to know, such as how to post discussions, complete quizzes, or use the email functioning. So once you log into your Brightspace course, it would look something like this. So you see all the courses are here and your Brightspace Essentials will appear something like this. For mine, it says staff, but for you, it will say student or learner. And you can click on it, go within Brightspace Essentials, and learn how to navigate yourself throughout the LMS. Now we will talk about the technical requirements for an online student. In general, you will need access to a computer, a reliable internet connection, a web browser, and word processing software. Some courses may require specialized software. For a detailed description of computer and software requirements for your course, review the welcome letter you would have received upon registration. It is always a good idea to have a backup plan in case of connection issue and equipment failure. Most libraries have internet access, for example. Or you may have a neighbor or friend that you can call in an event of technical problems that prevent you from accessing your course or turning in assignments. Having this planned ahead of time can prevent a lot of stress later. 
Now we will talk about who the online facilitators are and what their role is. In CCOL, we refer to our teachers as facilitators. Facilitators do not lecture or walk you through a course material in a way as an in-class instructor would. They facilitate your learning by being subject matter experts, responding to student inquiries regarding lesson content via discussion boards and email, providing guidance and feedback on assignments, and submitting final grades to the college. Please do keep in mind that our facilitators do not always work on campus at the college, Welcome back to part two of orientation for online learning for Center for Continuing and Online Learning. In this part, we're going to go over two other segments. We could talk about getting uh, tips for success, which will help you prepare to communicate online, review policies and guidelines, and organize your time. We'll also talk about college services and contacts, go over some student services, as well as key contacts within CCOL that will be useful to you during your time with us as a student. Tips for success. Let's review some strategies to help you be successful in online learning. We'll talk about preparing you to communicate online as online communication has its own etiquettes. We'll review some policies and guidelines that will be crucial for you to know as students. We'll also talk about some tips on how to organize your time effectively so that you are successful in your studies. Without a live class to keep you in touch with your classmates and facilitator, written communication becomes extremely important in online courses. Through email, online discussion boards, and chat rooms, you can feel just as connected to your classmates and facilitator as you do with your family and friends when using the phone or text messaging. For course content questions, consider using discussion boards so that everyone can learn together. Maybe your peers can answer your question faster than the facilitator. Use email only for issues of personal and confidential nature. When communicating in your online courses, keep these things in mind. Be sure to use correct spelling and grammar. Do not use text messaging lingo. Remember, your facilitator cannot read your mind and cannot see you to read your body language. If you are lost, confused, or unsure about anything, ask a question via email or by posting in the discussion board. Please connect with your course facilitators about communication options. While most prefer that you use email or the course discussion boards, some facilitators will offer Skype or phone meetings to students. Check with each facilitator about which communication options are available to you. Also, I'm effectively. Being successful in online learning will depend on your ability to effectively manage your time and be highly organized. When enrolling in a typical online class, plan to spend about two to four hours per week on that class. Without the regular structure of face-to-face -face classes, it is very important that you develop a plan for managing your study time so that you don't fall behind. You need a unique plan that works for you. For example, what other demands are you juggling in your life? Do you have a full-time or a part-time job? Are you a parent? Are you taking other classes? And how do they affect the amount of free time that you have each day to devote to your studies? Do you prefer to do schoolwork often in small chunks or less often in a larger chunk at a time? Are you more productive early in the morning, mid-afternoon, or at night? These are all the questions that you can ask yourself when creating your schedule. Create a plan that works for you. One size does not fit all. The Student Success Specialist team, which is myself and Tony, can assist you with building or strengthening your time management or organizational skills. One-on-one -on -one meetings can be booked in person or over the course requirements and schedule. Build into your schedule a weekly time when you can look ahead at what work is needed that week. Compare that with what else is going on in your life and make a plan for when and how you will complete the task. When you have a question or problem, seek assistance. Direct it to your fellow students through the course discussion board or to your instructor. Serving as a resource for each other is a big part of online learning. Some students even recruit a learning buddy in the class. Add bookmark or favorites in your browser to access the course site and any other resources that you use frequently in your course. Do not take tests on public or shared networks and even at home, you can ask others to turn off computers and mobile devices that may cause your connection to be slowed down and interfere with your test. Determine if you need to have a proctor for exams and tests. 
And if so, there is a fee that you have to cover. Find someone you know in your community who can answer your technical questions, such as when your printer won't print, your files won't open, your internet service provider is down for the day, or your browser keeps crashing. Lastly, be active in online discussions or chats, especially early in the semester. It helps you get to know the other students so that you don't feel so isolated the rest of the semester and you feel comfortable asking them questions when you need help. 5008 Thank you for listening and for joining us. We wish you the best of luck in your term. Please do not hesitate to reach out if you ever needed help with anything further.